class. We're going to be having government today and we're going to be looking at constitutional development. We're going to start at pre-independence constitution. Now, pre-independence constitution consists of Leighton Constitution, Macafessi Constitution, Clifford Constitution, Richard Constitution, and the rest of it. So today we're going to be focusing on the Clifford Constitution of 1922. Now, the pre-independence constitution, a constitution embodies the basic principles of which a state is run. It has an, a preamble which states the ideology of every state. Now, those constitutions, certain situations will cause them to go, to be amended or changed. For example, when a nation doesn't have a constitution, it calls for a constitutional review whereby they will have what we call constitutional conferences in other words, to produce a constitution. And that's the case as of Nigeria in 1922. So the Clifford Constitution was adopted in the year 1922. It derived its name from the former Governor General of Nigeria, who took after Lord Lugard in 1922. After Lord Lugard amalgamated Nigeria, he took over, uh, Hall Clifford took over from Lord Lugard, and there was a need for a constitution because Lord Lugard was running without a constitution. He had his own, uh, he had his own council, which was referred as the Nigerian Council but there was no constitution that was really operating. So we said that, he said it took over from former Governor General, Sir Lord Lugard. The constitution introduced a new legislative council, an executive council, which replaced the abolished old legislative council for Lagos Colony and the Nigerian council. So you remember what I said? I said Lord Lugard was not running with what? A constitution. What he was running with was only what we refer to as Nigerian council. And the Nigerian council comprised of the legislative council and the executive council. I hope you understand. So now, but with the introduction of, introduction of uh, the Clifford Constitution in 1922, we're able to have this, the Legislative Council and the uh, Executive Council were in place, but the fact, what was known as the Nigerian Council was abolished with, and replaced with Constitution. Now, the Constitution introduced elective principle which increased political agitation and awakened the spirit of nationalism in Nigeria. The, uh, the Northern Nigeria was not represented in the new legislative council. The governor general retained the power to legislate in the north. So, you know, initially the uh, Nigerian council, which was the executive council and the legislative council, people were not elected. The governor general can just come up and say, okay, you represent this person, you represent this faction, you represent this faction. That way, that was how they were running Nigeria. People were not allowed to vote. People were not allowed to have their say. Now, but this introduction of this Clifford Constitution helped change all of this. Is. So we're going to look at the merits of the Clifford Constitution, how it helped Nigeria, and how it was also a disadvantage to Nigeria. So number one, we said that the Constitution introduced elective principle for, for, for the first time, which allowed Nigeria to elect their representatives into the Legislative Council. You see, that's a good part of it. People can now vote. As much as it was a limited franchise, to an extent, but people now had the choice to vote. At least they can now decide who they want to put in place. That's what brought about the power of the Sardana of the North, and the rest of them. Now, number two, say it gave special impetus to political activities, which led to formation of political parties. So, because of this constitution, those nationalists, Nigerian nationalists, Tafawa Balewa, Awolowo, and the rest of them, they said, okay, since this constitution has come to be in place, let's form political parties, let's start contesting. Let the highest uh, political party, let them win. Let it be that it's Nigerians that was in power. And that way, they were gradually creeping into the, uh, uh, into the British Council. You know, all this process, this, this constitutional development formed the process for Nigerian independence in 1916. So Nigerian independence in 1916 didn't just happen just like that. It was a process. All those constitutions, Nigerians, like I said here, I said, he introduced elective principle which increased political agitation. People started being agitated. He said, oh, so these people know that we can operate a constitution and they've been keeping us in the dark. Let's do these things. Let's start voting. People started, started working and started earning money. Now, the third one said, increased political agitation. I just said that now. And waking the spirit of nationalism which quickened Nigeria's independence. That's where the first Nigerian newspaper was formed. The pilot, the patriot. Nigerians are studied abroad, they started coming home. You know, they heard about the constitution, they started coming home, they started to start getting involved in their own country. Now, it served as the first ever constitution of Nigeria. You can imagine, a country from 1914 to 1922 is a lot of, is a gap, is a long gap. And the country was running without constitution. 
Now this this constitution, that's why it will always be regarded as Nigerian first constitution. Even now, even with the uh, constitution we have now, sometimes they usually make a uh, referral to this constitution in their amendment. Now, he also witnessed the birth of newspapers in Nigeria. I said it earlier: the Patriots, Nigerian Pilots, the Horn, Trumpeter, and a lot of even some old newspapers that are still existing till now. This. This 1922 constitution brought about them because initially the Nigerian council, Nigeria didn't have newspaper, they didn't have political party. The governor general had a say, he was the, he was the all and all, you know, and all of that. Now, he started the process and prepared Nigerians for self-government. So if the people could now think for themselves, to decide to open newspapers, op uh, form political parties, they were getting ready, they were preparing themselves that one day we're going to be independent, one day we're going to rule ourselves. I hope you are getting what I'm saying. So now these things, are, like I said, in there is a process. Nigeria as well, they were getting up to become independent. That's why when the independence came in 1960, they were already prepared. Due to an extent, they were not prepared, but at least to a large extent, they were. They already knew what government, governance, and government was all about. So number seven, they said the constitution allowed Nigerians more representation than the Nigerian Council. You know, the Nigerian Council only allowed uh, three Nigerians and 46 British personnel. So imagine where you have British personnel, there are 46 and there are only three Nigerians. And those three Nigerians were in the Legislative Council. They didn't have anything to say. They were just there as, well, who, um, how do I say it now? Okay, they were just there as a representative of Nigeria. They will come out, come out. You know, they were just there as observers. They were they didn't have anything to say, they couldn't contribute to anything. They were just there. They were asked, they were just there for the name. Okay. So now we're going to look at the demerits of this constitution. Despite the fact that all these things that was happening, it created legislative council, gave Nigerians more representation and all of that. But it had its own disadvantage. Despite the fact it took away it took us away from the Nigerian Council and brought us here. It had I think it had some other disadvantages that were, I think, probably worse than the three previous one. Okay, the constitution isolated the northern province of Nigeria. You can imagine. They said, we are giving you people the north, the west, and the east. Yes. But why is it that they did not bring any person to represent the north? In our looking at this, you find out that the governor, you said, okay, I think I made it clear, said, the governor retained power to legislate for the North. That's impartiality. So they, they regarded the North as, as uneducated. There was nobody that could represent them. So they now said, oh yeah, the West, you have your premier. The East, you have your premier. The South, you have your body. The North, we will retain you for ourselves. It means they were gaining something. That they didn't want to relinquish power to the North and us. They wanted to allow the North and us to continue to be illiterate. You know, they had no say, their emirs were subject to the British Council, and all, they were made puppets, and that was not right. Now, the second one said the constitution was a reflection of the British policy of divide and rule by isolating northern provinces in spite of the 1914 amalgamation. After bringing Nigeria together and saying we are one Nigeria, they still decided that the North, no, we are the ones ruling these people, let's keep them for ourselves. Probably the produce they produce from their farms and all of that, you know, they were exporting it because they knew that if the Northerners had the representative, someone who could speak for them, all those things would not be happening. They'll be legislating the exportation of all those their cash crops and they'll be retaining the money for their the development of their state. But the, the, the British governor said that said these people if we allow them to get educated, they'll be wiser than us. So let's just control their income. Let's make them subject to us. So, okay, now the third one said by allowing only male adults earning 100 pounds per annum to vote, the constitution disenfranchised the majority of Nigerians. Now, disenfranchised, like we said, franchise means I allowed to vote. Disenfranchised, you are not allowed to vote. So it means as a Nigerian, you have to be up to 18, one, and you must be earning 100 pounds. So tell me, 1920, how many Nigerians were even educated to earn up to 100 pounds? Are you seeing? And it's pan. Pan means a year. In a year, you your income. When you're earning one one pound every month, in a year you're earning twelve pounds. 
and that's just that. So you see, it was a lot of things. Now, the constitution allowed the legislative council to be dominated by Europeans. You know, I told you in the Nigerian council, they had 46 Europeans and three Nigerians. So this one, the night, he gave Nigerians six, and the Europeans retained four. It's still that, you see that it's still not balanced. It's unequal. Now, the constitution did not extend elective principle to the executive council. The legislative council where people were allowed to be elected, but the executive council was mainly dominated by the governor. He's the one that selected people that win the executive council, whereby people in the legislative council were elected. You see? Now, the constitution vested too much powers on the governor, including the power to legislate for the not. The governor had all the powers. He had the veto power. You can finish deciding on that legislative council and he'll tell you, we're not doing it. And that's fine so in our next class, we're going to look at the major changes this Clifford Constitution brought to Nigeria, and also we're going to look at the uh, Richard Constitution. So in summary, in conclusion, you've seen what independ the Independence Constitution is, the Clifford Constitution, the merits and the merit. Okay, so, and that's that. So our, quest um, our questions will come in our WhatsApp plan. So if you have any questions, just drop it at the end of this video. I will answer you on our assignments. Do have a lovely day. God bless you.